Welcome back to Melrose, Minnesota. We are at the Central Minnesota Credit Union for their Member Appreciation Day and working with our affiliate, KASM. It is June Dairy Month, and during the break, folks went back and got a second or third dilly bar. But who's counting, right? We're, we're among friends here. It doesn't matter how many we have. It's Dairy Month. You know, you have as many of those as you want, right? Right? Yeah. You sit right there close to the dilly bars. You can get as many as you want there. You can reach right out and grab those. All right. Joining me now is... Um, is Mike McAndrews. He's chairman of the Stearns County American Dairy Association Board and a uh, dairy farmer in this area. Mike, thank you for joining us. A big month for uh, the American Dairy Association. And as you have some things here in the local area that uh, promote Dairy Month? Yes, we do. Uh, we got a couple different promotions. Uh, first one's a simple one, but we give a basket out, a basket out to the first baby born in every hospital in the county. It's uh, one of our big things we do. Just kind of appreciation full of cheese and different dairy products. Um, the second one is it's a separate committee, but we help out with uh, Breakfast on the Farm, which is coming up this Saturday. Which, um, it's just we help out, and our dairy princesses help up handle cheese and promotional items and things for that. Tell me a little bit about your dairy operation. Is it a family operation? Yes, I farm with my, uh, my wife, Kate, and then also my parents, um, Betty and Joe McAndrews. We farm about 500 acres and have 220 uh, registered Holsteins. And one jersey. And one jersey. <laughs> one jersey, right? What's the story behind the one jersey? Um, she just came with a different herd. We heard we purchased, and she was in it, and she's still around. So, <laughs> Still around. We know that it's been a tough last two, three years for the dairy industry. Uh, prices are starting to slowly improve, but you're dealing with higher feed costs as well. Uh, tell us about the, the challenge it is right now in the dairy industry. Um, it's, yeah, like I said, it's been a hard couple of years. It's just you never quite know what anything's going to bring. The commodity market's changed so rapidly from hour to hour now. It just it makes it real hard to they say to lock stuff in, but you're just never quite sure is twenty dollars milk enough when you got eight dollar corn kind of looking at it, purchasing that for the next couple of months. And do you you have to take a lot into consideration? I'm sure when you're looking, do we upgrade equipment? Uh, do we make some changes? Use technology that's available in the dairy operation? Uh, all those are big decisions, aren't they? Yeah, it's one thing we've been struggling with here the last three, four months. Here is we, as prices have improved, we haven't purchased anything in two, three years just because of the low prices and stuff starting to wear out. And it's like, okay, what's our highest priority in upgrading and starting, basically starting from scratch on a few things. It's. Uh, when you're a dairy farmer, it's, it's, a, it's a real commitment. I mean, uh, we, we hear about some young people not wanting to stay in the business just because uh, they're so tied down. you got to be there. The cows have to be milked. Uh, as a young dairy producer like you, I mean, uh, kind of give us your thoughts on, on being in the business and what that takes. Um, I guess, to me, I've never had a thought of not being in the business. I grew up on a dairy farm. I've worked on a couple different dairy farms, and I came back and had this opportunity to move to Stearns County. Um, and it's been a great experience. I love the people here. Um, it's amazing, like my immediate neighborhood, and I guess within five miles, there's all kinds of young people, and that's what I really love about Central Minnesota. Um, as far as the commitment, it is amazing how committed these people are, how dairy farmers are, to, I guess, just to commit it to their, to their cows, the land. I mean, this year has been a struggle with the weather and stuff, and just people planting corn and making hay at the same time. It's just kind of crazy. <laughs> but as a young dairy producer, this is something that you've wanted to do and you want to keep doing. Yeah, it's definitely what I've always wanted to do. Like I said, I had that opportunity to come and move to Stearns County about five years ago. I'm completely happy with my decision, it's, even though it's been a struggle. It's just what I've always enjoyed doing, what I want to do until I retire. So it's not just a business, it's a way of life for you, right? Yes, definitely. Definitely have to be a way of life. You do it every single day. What time do you milk of a morning? Uh, we start at four in the morning. And we get done about 9.30 in the morning and start up again at 5 at night. You do both milking? No, I fortunately just have to do the morning ones. Fortunately, you get to do the morning ones. You like that early morning? I don't like it, but I do like to have my nights off. So. Uh, all right. I'd be sleeping if I was getting up to do the early morning milking. Now, do you do you any robotics uh, in your milking uh, parlor, or what do you have? Um, we have a Surge Autoflow parlor. Uh, it's fairly automated. Cows, we can milk one cow at a time, and we can actually get quite a few cows an hour through the parlor. Um, 
as far as robots and stuff, we've definitely looked into upgrading to a robot, but like I said, the prices haven't been real good lately, and I don't even think real seriously about it. Maybe down the line, hopefully, things continue to improve. Mike, thank you for being with us, and always good to uh, see that uh, uh, those young people in the dairy industry and sticking with it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Mike McAndrews, he's chairman of the Stearns County American Dairy Association Board. All right. Let's bring in a couple of our hosts here. We are at the Central Minnesota Credit Union in Melrose for their member appreciation day. We have Andy Welly and Brad Herkenhoff with us and a couple of the lenders here at the, the uh, Central Minnesota Credit Union. And all these people are here for a loan, so uh, I'm sure you can take care of them, right, uh, Andy? Oh, you bet. I'll be busy all afternoon by the looks of it, huh? <laughs> right. Well, I'm trying to see, did they come with their hands out or with a check to pay? I'm not sure which that is. Uh, we'll see. Tell, tell us, yeah, let's, let's talk about this Customer Appreciation Day, a way of saying thanks to your members. Yeah, it's a one time a year that we get to invite everybody in to have uh, a free meal of some sorts, either breakfast or dinner. Uh, and it's uh, appreciation for all the business that we do get from everyone. Tell us a little bit about the credit union. Uh, the credit union has nine, ten offices, and uh, uh, we do all kinds of loans. We do uh, uh, house loans for the people who live in town. We do farm loans for uh, any type of farming operation that there might be, be it a dairy operation, a hog operation, a turkey operation, or a cropping operation. So, And then we also do business loans for the Main Street businesses that are in town or out of town or wherever they might be located. Let's talk a little bit about the ag economy in this area. Uh, it's been a challenging spring, I know, in, in getting the crops in. It's been a challenge for the last couple of years for this area, especially because it's so uh, focused on dairy. There's a lot of dairy in this area. Um, and yeah, now this spring it's been a struggle with not being able to get the crops in the ground and, and then the price of corn. If uh, the dairy producers or turkey producers are buying all their corn, uh, it's a struggle for them. You know, the prices might be a little better than what they were two years ago, but the input costs are so much higher. So. And whether you're growing crops or especially in the livestock business, you have to have a good relationship with your lender. How do you approach that relationship in working with your customer? Uh, getting to know the uh, members is really what I see as a key. Uh, you know, understanding, you know, not only their business, but also their family, their history, um, you know, and, and where they're at financially and what their goals are for the future. So, Any of you out there work with Andy? I mean... <laughs> is that good or bad? I mean, uh, is he is he pretty good to work with? That's what I'm looking for here. Nobody's throwing anything. That's They're a good thing. There. Okay. Let's go to Brad Herkinoff. Now we just had Vicky Herkinoff, that sister-in-law. I understand, right? That is correct. She married my brother. So, uh, can you tell us any uh, good stories on her, or she, <laughs> or you, you? But she will get equal time. Uh, I better be quiet then. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the agriculture in this area. Uh, heavy on dairy, but, but pretty diversified, really. Yeah, definitely very concentrated on dairy, but enough uh, poultry operations, fair amount of hog, um, enough crop, yeah, good variety of egg. So, Let's talk about working with your ag customers. Uh, good news for, for someone borrowing, interest rates uh, are low and continue to be low. But let's talk about the approach, as Andy, Andy mentioned, uh, that relationship, getting to know your customers and working with them. Yes, definitely. The way I look at it, I, I like to do a team approach. I should not look at your lender as a necessary evil, uh, making sure that you're open and honest with them, and we try to do the same with all of our members. So, And like Andy said, uh, get to know their family, know their operation well, the history, it, a huge part of it. It's important for you as a lender to understand what they're going through, uh, to know that it's been a real struggle, especially with, with the dairy industry the last few years, and, and that they're, you know, they need to know when they come to their lender that you're going to be understanding about it. Absolutely, and we're very knowledgeable of the dairy industry, or the entire egg industry, and we stay very up to date on it, so we know the, the tough times that they've had to go through, and do business with great people, and we trust that we're making the right decision there. Very good. And Andy, getting back to you, you mentioned you do uh, work with the folks in town as well. How has the, uh, the rural economy been in general in this area? Uh, it's been fairly steady. Um, you know, there's not really, you know, businesses closing the door. There's still uh, most of the businesses on Main Street are open and 
houses are being sold and there's a few houses even being built and you know not only Melrose but the local communities as well so I was going to ask you about the housing market in this area how is it well I sold my house about a year ago so <laughs> it was doing okay um, I, I since then I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to it but I know there's been some activity in that market as well so <clears throat> And finally, uh, Brad, this is a way for you to be able to say thank you to the customers that do business with you. Absolutely, and we really appreciate all of our members do, doing business with the credit union and also with the local community here. Really, really appreciate it. So. And they're glad to get a free breakfast out of you, finally. I mean, they're, they're, they were looking for something for free is what, is what I heard. Is that right? Is that right? You were looking for something for free from them, right? Okay. <laughs> Besides the calendar, they wanted the breakfast. <laughs> we're just happy they made it in. That's very good. All right. Thanks a lot. That's Andy Welly and Brad Herkinoff with the Central Minnesota Credit Union. It's their customer appreciation day, their member appreciation day, a way for them to say thanks for the folks that they do business with throughout the course of the year in this very heavily ag-concentrated area here in the Melrose, Minnesota area. All right, we will take a break. We have more guests coming up. We'll talk more about some of the issues for this particular area as we work with our affiliate KASM. I think we have politicians coming up next. Don't miss that. That's next on Agritalk. <laughs>